The Broncos improve to 7-6. and six. They take down the Easton Stick-led Chargers 24-7 to seven in what was an all-around great win for Denver, right? The defense kind of got their swagger back. They forced the takeaways. The offense was the offense. It's throw it up to Cortland Sutton. That's the playbook for Denver moving forward. Just throw it up to number 14 and throw it to Samaj P. Ryan on third and seven, and good things are going to happen to you. But let's check out the final stats from this game as we break down the win for the Broncos. Russell Wilson, 21 for 33, 224 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. A great bounce back performance after a tough game over in Houston last week. Denver's offense altogether amounting 322 yards, 216 through the air, 106 on the ground, one pick by Russ, and they dominated time of possession. Over half the game belonging to the Broncos. Meanwhile, Denver's defense just put the clamps on the Chargers offense. Even when Justin Herbert played for most of the first half, they had nothing going. They didn't. 207 yards through the air. About a quarter of that came on one pass to Quinton Johnston. 76 yards on the ground. Two takeaway or two turnovers. Ultimately, Denver's offense just kicked ass. Denver's defense Kicked ass and take names, right? This is an all-around great team win. Offense, defense, and special teams. You can look at the numbers side by side. Every single category, Denver dominated in. Third downs, even a little bit of time of possession. But Denver doing a great job of keeping themselves alive in the playoff race, of course. We will look at an updated playoff picture in just a moment. But really quickly, I do have to tell everyone about our sponsor for today's show, which is Prize Picks. If you're not familiar with Prize Picks, here's how it works: you pick more or less on two to six player staff projections, and if you go four for four, five for five, well, you could be taking home $250 if you pick up to six players. So go to PrizePicks.com/clns and use code CLNS, and here are my selections for. Sunday Night Football, Dak Prescott, the more on his passing yards. Jalen Hurts, the less on his passing yards. The more on Tony Pollard's receiving yards. And then the more on DeAndre Swift and Brandon Cooks at half a touchdown. So that's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And use code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100. I put that link in the comments and description of today's video. Now let's look at what everyone's looking for. The updated AFC playoff picture. Watching the end of that Chiefs-Bills game, I wasn't quite sure what's actually best for Denver, right? To have the Bills stay in the race at 7-6, and six, join the Steelers, the Colts, the Texans, the Bengals, Buffalo, and Denver, all at 7-6, and six, or to kind of knock Buffalo out of it. But now at 8-5, and five, the Broncos are just one game back from Kansas City. Now, they won't have a head-to-head -head tiebreaker. It was one-to-one -one each. But then it comes down to record in the division, and that's going to favor Kansas City because Denver lost to the Raiders in Week 1 and the Chiefs later on as well. So if you want to chase that, numbers top, number, uh, that top spot in the AFC West, that loss for Kansas City definitely benefited it. But if you wanted to kind of get a breakup in the wild-card pack between one, two, three, four, five, six teams all at seven and six. That definitely did not help. Now, Denver's still on the outside looking in. The tiebreaker at that point comes down to head to head a little bit, but also wins in the AFC. Denver's got seven wins. A few of those came against NFC teams like the Bears and like the Packers. So, unfortunately for them, they are on the low end of the totem pole when it comes to AFC wins. So, that is the updated AFC playoff picture. Four games to go. So, we are getting into crunch time where we can really start looking at a rooting guy. Now, let's talk about Russell Wilson today. I feel like I've been pretty fair and just honest about my Russell Wilson opinions throughout the season. And today, he got the job done. Like, did you need Russell Wilson to make crazy plays? No, you had the ball with the fourth, in the fourth quarter with a two-score lead. Like, you didn't need Russell Wilson to make incredible throws to the sideline. No, you needed Russell Wilson to burn some clock. And he did exactly that. So Russell Wilson, when put in a position where it's a very clear thing for him to do, and that is maintain a lead or keep yourself in the game, he's done a very good job of that. Can he be Superman? Probably not. But you know what? 24-7, to 7, 
You don't need Superman. You need a guy to throw for 224 yards, complete over 50% of his passes, two touchdowns, and sure, one early interception, but all around, I think a pretty really good game from Russell Wilson. Dante Williams, his first rushing score since his rookie year, 2021, December, nearly two years ago, he gets the first rushing touchdown since then. A couple of receiving touchdowns since then, though. 17 carries, 66 yards. He is a mean SOB to tackle. He is not a guy I want to see in the hole if I'm a linebacker. Javante Williams is just getting better, it feels like, as the season has gone on. Cortland Sutton, every single week, I say while doing the watch party, that's the best Cortland Sutton touchdown we've seen all year. And then the very next week, he tops it. That last one, drawing a flag, one-handed catch in the end zone, 40 to 50 yards down from the line of scrimmage, might have been the best touchdown of the entire season. It's up there with the Bills touchdown for sure. He's had some incredible catches this year. Cortland Sutton is the offense, right? It is throw the ball to Sutton. So the only little bit of fear I ever have in me is if a defense ever comes up with the idea of maybe we should remove Cortland Sutton for the game, Denver could be in trouble. Now, before we get on to the rest of my post-game show, I do want to get your opinion right now. Will the Broncos make the playoffs? They're sitting at 7-6. and six. They've got four games remaining. At Detroit next week, who just lost to the Bears on the road. They come back home. They play the Chargers, who my suspicion is, and I haven't seen on Twitter if it's confirmed yet, Justin Herbert might be done for the year. Like an index finger injury on your throwing hand when you're pretty much eliminated from the playoffs seems like a pretty good time to shut it down. So after that, the Patriots on Christmas Eve. And then you go and finish the season in LA or in Vegas against the Raiders. So decently good about uh, Denver potentially going 3-1 and one in that stretch, getting to 10 wins. I think nine wins might be enough, but we have six teams at seven wins. So nine wins is probably going to leave some team on the outside and due to tiebreakers, one or two teams on the inside. So for Denver, I think the number you're chasing is 10. Justin Herbert, though, like I said, he left the game, unfortunately. He suffered a right index finger injury. He went 9 of 17 for 96 yards and one interception, which, by the way, like, first off, it should have been another takeaway for Denver's defense. Jaquan McMillan absolutely strip sack, scoop and score at the end of the first half. But still, this Denver defense, like, they play with some tenacity. They play with some swagger. They play with a chip. It's not even a chip on their shoulder. It's like a whole wedge. It's like a door wedge on their shoulder. It's like a whole uh, truckload of mulch from your local playground on your shoulder. That's how tough this defense plays. And shout out to Vance Joseph every single week. I continue to be more and more amazed at the dramatic turnaround from the start of the year to where we are right now at 7-6. and six. Easton Stick, though, give the guy credit. Like, he probably played better than what we expected. 13 for 24, 179 yards. He needed to play the hits. Go to Keenan Allen. Go to Austin Eckler. And, yeah, at the end of there, a couple forced fumbles. But I guess I'll give the guy credit for hanging in there and playing pretty well, all things considered. Austin Eckler, he had 10 carries for 51 yards, one touchdown. Quinton Johnston, the rookie out of TCU, he had that big play. Uh, giving the Chargers a little bit of life, which did set up their only score of the game and their only touchdown in the last three weeks or so. But altogether, Samaj P. Ryan, Lucas Kroll came up with a huge uh, reception to really help the Denver Broncos separate themselves from the Chargers in the first half. But Samaj P. Ryan, he might not jump off the screen. He might not jump off the box score. Like five receptions, 36 yards. Seems like an okay day. Man. The guy in two-minute drills is unguardable, it feels like. He is the go-to guy for an underneath jump down to get the first down. Like, just Samaj P. Ryan, first down, book it. And then, like we said, Keenan Allen, he set a single-season rece- uh, receptions record for the Chargers, 109, so uh, congratulations to him. Six receptions for 68 yards. But ultimately, Denver was the better team start to finish. This one was never really in contention. In my eyes, 24-7 to over the Chargers. Defense gets their swagger back. The turnovers return. The offense was smart with the football. And the Broncos punched their seventh win of the season. Keep themselves very much in the AFC playoff race. 
And they got a big game coming up on the road next week in Detroit. But then they come home, play two in a row against the Chargers and the Patriots, two bad teams. And they end the season against the Raiders, who didn't score a single point today. Call me crazy. I feel that like this team could easily go three and one and skip talking about getting the seven seed. How about you shoot for the stars a little bit here, right? Try and give yourself a better matchup in the playoffs by moving up the totem pole in the wild card rankings. And that's going to do it for us on our post game show today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the win. Enjoy Victory Monday. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you all later.